A big thank you to White Rabbit for bringing this video to all of you via Patreon. Hello all, played a game with Guillaume, Master Chef recently, and the recording totally balked, so... So we're gonna play through the recording here and hopefully you will all make do with that. And it's just one of those things, I don't like it any more than I'm sure all of you do, but... This is one of the better Guillaume games that I got and I wanted to get it out to all of you, so... We'll just have to make do with it, I'm afraid. Up against Omnath, Locus of Rage. Nicole Bolas the Ravager. And Ramos Dragon Engine. And decided to keep this hand, I think. Our opponent got down a mountain and then played out the Wildfield Border Post. Nicole Bolas playing a basic. And then it is just a Dryad Arbor for the Omnath player. So we decide to play a tap land. We drew into Academy Manufacturer, which I do have high hopes for in this deck. And then our Ramos opponent playing Cross and Verge tapped. So we know that they've got a mountain to play, they'll be able to crack that next turn. So just a couple of mana being held up here and the Omnath player starts to go off. Playing a Tiger, they've got a Wild Growth on their basic and an Amulet of Vigor as well, so I'm thinking at this point, should we be going after the Amulet of Vigor with the Rex Sage? I don't think we'll be able to do it quickly enough, to be honest. Because I didn't keep the best hand here. Gingerbread Cabin now. And we can get enough Forest into play, thanks to the Yavimaya. So, thinking that I'll play that into the Academy Manufacturer next turn. Cross and Verge being cracked, and I think he goes for a couple of Tricycle Lands here. The Jeskai. Yeah, the Jeskai and the Sultai one it is. And then a search for as counter is the first spell for the Grixis player. And yeah, already making use of the Amulet of Vigor. That was a Ranger's Path, went in for a couple of forests, they were dual lands. Became untapped, and then they had enough for the Tireless Tracker. So only two cards in hand over there, but ramping like crazy. Decide to get down the Yavimaya, ready for the Gingerbread Cabin next turn, and throw down the Academy Manufacturer. Obviously when we get the food from the gingerbread cabinet will make a clue and a treasure as well. And our opponent continuing to make mana as well, that is a Knight of the Reliquary. Search for Azcanter dumps a patient rebuilding and the Grixis player making plenty of mana as well. A Sol Ring fixing the colours with a Solemn Simulacrum, getting them into a mountain. And now the Gruel player gets to go crazy with an Omnath Locus of Rage, dropping a land that will make an equipment and a clue token thanks to the tracker. And there's us limping our way up to four mana. We get another land, so go for that gingerbread cabin, making a bunch of tokens, play the Guillaume, and that will trigger on itself entering at the end of the turn, so getting a bunch more clues and foods and treasures as well. And now it is a Maelstrom Archangel, so Thinking that this isn't a dragon deck, just a generic five color deck maybe. Seems as though it's more focused around Alara and the Maelstrom and maybe Cascade and stuff like that. Anyway, search for as counter triggering over there. And they go for Temple of Epiphany, which will scry them, and then it is Nicol Bolas the Ravager. I think I discard the Lanoir Wastes here because the Swamp is a Bayou thanks to the Avamaya. Our opponent over here discards a Cathari Remnant, and it was a forest that was discarded here, so two cards at the beginning of the Omnath player's turn. And then immediately going up to three because they crack a clue. That allows them into Kalni Heart Expedition, and then cracking another clue. And they get into Null Rod there, so switching off their own clue tokens, curiously, and... Yeah, they swung 5 points of damage in each, 5 commander damage over at the Grixis player. Yeah, switching off their own clue tokens, but more importantly, switching off our treasures, which is a good means of ramp for us at the moment, so don't particularly like the idea of that. So the plan here is to go in for Reclamation Sage onto the Null Rod, and we draw into the Gilded Goose, so that will get us into even more food tokens. I think the loose plan here was to go for Rex Sage, blow that up, and then we can crack the treasures to go for a Savvy. Or maybe Pawn of Ulamog. But I think I just go for the Gilded Goose here. So blowing up the Null Rod, and yeah, going in for the Gilded Goose. So that makes a food, and then we'll get a couple more food. 
and more importantly treasures to go with it because I want to hold up Return of the Wild Speaker here and draw five cards off the Gome. We've also got enough mana held up to sacrifice the food and make it indestructible. And now the Maelstrom Archangel just swinging straight in towards the Gruel player. And they don't have any reaches over there so they are going to hit them. And with that they get to cast a Sunbird's Invocation from their hand for free. And that's actually a really nice interaction between these two cards because Sunbird's Invocation cares about you casting things from your hand. And this actually allows you to cast things from your hand for free so it does count as from your hand and it does count as casting so it will trigger the Sunbird's Invocation. Then making Wooburg they go for a niv -Mizzet Reborn which will get a bunch of cards into their hand potentially and then it is Yidris Maelstrom Wielder that they got from the Sunbird's Invocation there. Memory serves me, they actually only got two cards from the niv -Mizzet Reborn which is quite unlucky. Yeah, it was a couple of Cascade cards, I think. Deny Reality and Ethereum Horn Sorcerer is what they got from the niv -Mizzet Reborn. Over to the Grixis player's turn. And they decide to put a Hypersonic Dragon into the bin. And during their turn 6, flipping over, Nicol Bolas the Ravager. So flipping that over into Nicol Bolas the Arisen, and they decide to go for drawing a couple of cards here. And then upon going to 8 cards in hand, they decide to just scoop it up because Magic Online. I'm like a stuck record. I did say that no one should be scooping up early, but everyone just totally ignores that on Magic Online, as you all know. So now it's time to see how far off the Omnath player goes. They drop an Arid Mesa to get Landfall a couple of times. So they will be able to crack the Carney Heart Expedition here. So cracking the Arid Mesa for the second landfall trigger, get another clue token, another 5-5 elemental, and that puts the third counter on the expedition. So cracking the expedition straight away, and that gives them more landfall. The Amulet of Vigor will become relevant again. The two lands that they just searched for will become untapped. Only one card in hand luckily, but they do have those clue tokens again. And it just so happens that they had a harmonize, so going up to three cards in hand straight away. Cracking a clue token, buffing their tireless tracker even further. There is an exploration, giving them another land for the turn. And a Kodama's Reach. So they'll be able to get the land in untapped, and then play the land that they search for as well. Which is exactly what they do here, so... Again, triggering a bunch more landfall, they've got plenty of elementals to throw damage around with now and they get into a really good draw there in fires of Yavimaya so creatures you control have haste and they just turn everything in sideways towards the Wooberg player here which is really lucky for us so we get to survive this our opponent blocks as best they can and they even sacrifice a land on the way out but I think they just end up yeah they get a Mardu tricycle land there so no Glacial Chasm or anything like that. Their commander goes down at least and they do get to throw some lightning bolts around here. So what we do is tap down the land, sacrifice a food, make the Guillaume indestructible. We are going to lose the Gilded Goose, surprisingly not bolting the Academy Manufacturer. And then at the end of the turn we are going to go for a Hail Mary attempt to get into something with the Return of the Wild Speaker but unfortunately doesn't seem as though we get into much of anything. I was hoping for some kind of um, cranial plating or some semblance of a Voltron piece, but it's not to be during this turn, unfortunately. So I decide to play the Ancient Tomb this turn and go in for the Chatterfang, because we are going to get a decent number of tokens in this turn, and that will create a lot of Squirrel tokens for us. And then just in case we survive, going for the Pawn of Ulamog as well. If we lose some creatures then they'll be replaced by spawns and squirrel tokens as well. And then seeing as how every point of commander damage is going to matter, decide to turn the Guillaume in sideways. And at the end of the turn, our commander will trigger so we'll get a couple of clues, a couple of food, a couple of treasures. We'll get squirrels into play for each of those as well. So end up with a couple more clues, food and treasures and six squirrels in total. But I am not feeling all that hopeful at this point. I'm just thinking that we're going to be able to chump block with some of these elementals swinging in at us. Anyway, they start cracking clue tokens here. 
I think they end up cracking all of their clue tokens. So drawing themselves up to five, that is six. And then sacrificing the Dryad Arbor to <laughs> the Natural Order. And that is what spells the end for us. It is your typical Kratuf Behemoth win. I was, just for the fun of it, going for cracking a clue token there, which was just a ravenous chupacabra anyway. So they turn in sideways, we take it. And that's the game for us. Just wanted to show you all this one to, one, gauge the interest of Guillaume Master Chef, but also, because we could show off the Academy Manufacturer in this game, we could see how much it ramps us and gets us extra food and clues and stuff, so yeah, really enjoyed the Academy Manufacturer. Just didn't get into the Voltron pieces we needed, unfortunately, but that's just the way it goes sometimes, apparently. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to leave it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want to see more from Guillaume Master Chef, then be sure to let me know in the comments section as well. Hopefully the replay function didn't put you off too much. I'm Travel Kai, on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.